In today's video, I'm going to share with you the techniques that I used to make this artwork. There's some quite interesting techniques, so you might want to stay till the end of this video. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Nauri Radwan. I am the concept artist for this channel and you are tuned to photomanipulation.com. Before we start in this video or this tutorial, I just want to tell you that I have noticed in my past videos, I was covering the same techniques over and over again and again in every video. And if anything, that will just make the videos longer. So what I have decided to do is I will only focus on the most important parts in the video or in the tutorial. And even with that, this video is still like 40 minutes long. If you are new to this channel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the videos of the walkthroughs that I have done before where I covered all of the things or all of my workflow from fixing the values, the composition, the colors and all of that. I have like three or four videos on this channel where I explained all of these things. I will leave the videos in the description. If you are new, make sure to watch them after finishing this video. And without any further ado, let's start with the tutorial. First, I start with object selection tool, and then I drag the square around the object that I want to select. Keep in mind that this tool works with uh, artificial intelligence, so it might not give you an accurate result uh, at the first time, so you need to do the select and mask from select menu by going to select and then click and hold shift and click on select and mask and then add radius, feather and contrast and click OK. It depends on what you see in the preview. What you will try to do is get the best results on the edges and also uh, try not to get the white strokes around the object. I use this technique to cut all of the uh, mountains, the rocks and the castles. Also, I used it to cut the model and the boat. And because object selection tool is not very accurate, uh, you might want to uh, spend extra time fixing uh, the uh, extras in the uh, object selection from white strokes or the objects. And that's by using the lasso tool or the pen tool, whatever you are comfortable with using. Also, one other thing is after you finish cutting an object, try to remove things that might expose the size or might ex or might cover the object that you are cutting such as people or in my case these pillars uh, that's in front of the castle because they make the castle look like it's uh, close and the second technique that i used to cut the ice flows is the technique that we covered in the past three videos, which is turning the uh, image to black and white and try to make this high contrast between the white and black. If you want to know more about this technique, I talked about it more in depth in my latest videos. I will link the video in the description. After you create this high contrast between the bright uh, areas and the dark areas, uh, with the levels or curves or whatever you want to use, add blur to it to get rid of that uh, extra black uh, points. And after you finish, make sure the ice flows are the white parts in the image and take that image by copying it and then paste it as a mask to the first image, that's the original image, and then use the select and mask to get uh, best to get better results on the edges also add feather and contrast and that's it click ok and i used the same technique to cut the clouds but i used the magic selection tool at first make sure it's three by three or five by five and uh, increase the tolerance. Click on the area of the clouds that you want to cut and then use the select and mask to restore the edges. And then cut it from the original image and turn it to black and white and add black uh, background beneath it. Select it and merge it with the black background and then use the gradient tool, the transparent one with a black color 
and make sure the mode is either hard mix or vivid light and then use the brush to get rid of the mountains or whatever is covering the um, cloud and then use the same layer as a mask because we need that cloud to be uh, in black and white anyway apply it and then take it to your artwork make sure after you paste it on your artwork to duplicate it multiple times to make it more visible sometimes when you use the technique of uh, creating high contrast between the brights and the darks uh, it will not be very accurate so you might want to use the brush and the white color to paint on the uh, object that you want to cut because you don't want it to look transparent after you add it to your artwork and here we start with the composition and first I start with this simple gradient as it's, it's going to be the C in my artwork it's just a gradient from the dark blue to the uh, uh, brighter blue or let's say cyan and then I added the grain effect that will add noise from the uh, camera raw filter uh, this part is not very important because I already uh, covered it, uh, talked about it in uh, previous videos that I talked to you about in the intro. So you make sure you um, go and visit those videos. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed up this uh, part and I will comment or narrate the most important parts in this video. After pasting the rocks or the mountains that I got from the stock images, I wanted to create that, um, let's say, realistic transition between them, the, fourth of, uh, the three of them, sorry. So what I did is I used the uh, same black and white technique, but this time not to cut the object, just to cut part of it. And that part is going to be the areas where these rocks connect with the other rocks. So I don't want it to be straight lines or soft lines or blurred lines I want it to look re as realistic as it can be so I used the technique to cut uh, the uh, bottom areas from this rock as you can see and then I used that black and white image as a mask and as you can see it gave that realistic transition between the rocks If you apply the technique and you get that transparent areas, you have two options. Option number one is to add another mountain or rock stock image behind them, or just use the brush and restore some areas. Now let's talk about the color correction and the values. I need you to focus on this part because the techniques that I use to fix the values and the colors are the same that I used for the rest of the objects. The first thing I do is I add hue and saturation adjustment layer and I decrease the saturation. Next step is I add channel mixer and I turn the blending mode to color. Basically what you want to do here is if the object is too reddish then decrease the red color. If it's too cyanish then increase the red color. If it's too bluish decrease the blue. If it's too yellowish increase the blue and you get the idea what we try to do here is to restore the natural tone of the object and then I add levels adjustment layer and I start to fix the values and I already told you what you try to do here the objects that's close to the eye or to the camera have more contrast and will show more details the objects that are far from the eyes or the camera they will show less details and they will have less contrast. They will be faded and affected by the color of the sky. And then I add another levels adjustment layer set to color blended mode. And what I try to do now is match the color of the object with the rest of the background, which is the mountains and the lake at the bottom. 
and those have this cyanish bluish uh, color and I will try to match it to the uh, cliff or the rock image that I am working on right now. The reason why I didn't show you the process of me fixing the other rock colors is because I didn't like that reddish tone. So what I did is I copied the adjustment layers of the new rock that I just showed you how I fixed the color to and I applied it to the rest of the rocks. The goal is to have them in the same color. Now let me take you back to the beginning and show you how I did the lighting. I add exposure adjustment layer and I increase the exposure. I click on the mountain layer. I make a copy of it. I apply the mask. I add a black background beneath it. I copy that image and then I paste it on the mask of the exposure. And I delete the duplicated image and I click on the mask. I add levels adjustment layer and I make it brighter. The reason is just to have that realistic transition between the, ro the rock lighting and the rest of the mountain. And then I add color balance adjustment layer set to color blending mode. I copy the mask from the exposure and I apply it to the color balance and I try to add the color of the light source. And then I turn the blending mode to screen. And after that, I decrease the opacity. I applied the same technique to the other mountain, but this time I didn't use the original layer as a mask because there is no transition between the other rocks needed. All I have to do is paint with a white stroke or the white brush, sorry. And then I copied the color balance from the other mountain and I applied the same mask to it that I just painted. This time I turn it to color blending mode. And then I match the color to the other mountain. I have noticed that there is that dark area on the first mountain. So what I did is I went back and I painted it with the white color on the exposure layer and then I went to the mask and delete it just to not have it right there because it looked distracting. Next I placed this castle image and what I did is I turned it or I used the technique of the black and white and the vivid light and that's just to have that realistic transition between the castle and the mountain beneath it. And then I used the select and mask to get smoother results and I used the select or I used the lasso tool, sorry, to remove the areas that were outside the castle or they were not necessary in my scene so I just removed them. And then I used the levels adjustment layer to fix the values of that castle. Then I used the same technique of the exposure adjustment layer to add light into the castle. I used the gradient tool, the uh, transparent one in white color, and I just dragged from the area of the light source. I used levels adjustment layer set to color blending mode, 
and I copied the mask from the exposure adjustment layer of the lighting and I tried to match the color of or the tone of the lighting with the rest of the mountains and the rocks beneath it. Then I used the lasso tool uh, to paint over areas that the gradient tool didn't reach and I wanted to be specific because I didn't want just to drag the gradient tool. I wanted to be specific where the light reach or where the light touch or reflect. At the same time that I was selecting the areas that supposed to be bright, I was trying to add the shadows as well and that's by not selecting them in the lasso tool while selecting the areas that's supposed to be bright. Here I used the mask tool that turns everything that I didn't select to red color and that's just to add some featherness to the shadows because I didn't want the shadows to be uh, straight lines. I went back to the exposure adjustment layers of the mountains and I added the hue and saturation adjustment layer. I applied the same masks from each layer and I added um, the lightness and that's just to uh, remove some of the high contrast in those areas. And for this image of this mountain, I didn't want to affect the snow at the bottom. So what I did is I used the vivid light, the hard mix technique to separate the snow from the mountain. And that's because I want to work on the snow uh, separately. So I used it as a mask in exposure layer and I removed it from the rest of the other adjustment layers. And now I can work on it separately without affecting the mountain. And then I start to fix the light of it on the exposure adjustment layer. And then I added hue and saturation adjustment layer, decreased the saturation of it. And I added color balance adjustment layer, used the same mask of the snow, turned it to color blending mode. And then I added blue and cyan to match it with the uh, snow or the ice flows. I went to the other mountain image, I added exposure adjustment layer to add lightness because I felt that area was supposed to be um, facing the light source and it's supposed to reflect some light. And so that's what I did. I used the same techniques. I added the exposure. I fixed the colors with the um, uh, channels mixer and the color balance, uh, etc. Uh, I already showed you how that works. So you are free to add the lights wherever you want. I wanted to work more on the transition between the castle and the mountain. So what I did is I clicked on the castle image uh, layer, sorry. I added a mask and then using the lasso tool, I randomly selected areas and I clicked delete to delete that areas from the castle. That way it will look like there was rocks uh, going through that castle. And then I continued doing that till I covered the castle and the buildings. I added exposure adjustment layer to that mountain and then I start to paint in some areas that are supposed to face the light source and also to make it more make sense that the other buildings in the castle are reflecting light. And then I fixed the colors by adding channel mixers and color balance, etc. Now it's time to get rid of that gradient at the bottom. So what I did is I merged all of the mountains in the back. I duplicate the layer and I scaled it 
flipped it on the vertical line just to make it look like it's the reflection in the water. I deleted the first part at the top and then I used um, the mountain. Uh, first, I locked the layer, lock it, and then add motion blur from the blur menu. Make sure it's not too much. Then add exposure adjustment layer and make it darker. Add more gamma or contrast. Make sure it's only affecting the bottom areas. And then add levels adjustment layer set to color blending mode. Add cyan and blue to make it bluish. This is the color. This is usually the color of the water in the ice flows areas. And then with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, add just a bit of lightness. And if you want more realism, add noise texture at the top that's set to screen blending mode. I would like to stop the video right here to tell you about my digital landscape reloaded curves where I explain a lot of techniques like this and more. I will go more in depth in explaining these techniques. I will also show you more advanced tips and tricks. I also have full walkthrough videos in this course where I show you how I made those artworks from the beginning till the finish without speeding or cutting any parts of it. So if you are interested in getting that course, I will leave the link in the description. And let's carry on with the video. To remove that black stroke or that black halo around that cloud, first select it and then click on the mask tool. Now we try to make that red color uh, go inside the cloud and that's by adding blur and then click Ctrl L for the levels. We'll remove that mid bar till you can see it's inside the cloud and then add hue and saturation adjustment layer. Invert it and add lightness. And as you can see, that will remove that black or that black halo. Merge them together and then click on Control U. That will bring the hue and saturation menu and add just a bit of lightness. And then click OK. The rest is simple. What you will try to do is just add channels mixer to uh, match the color of that cloud with the rest of the scene. That will be adding cyan and blue and just a bit of magenta. The one is for the color and then one you will try to turn it to screen or a linear light blending mode. And that will be the lighting layer. So you will add a mask to it and invert it. Using the gradient tool, drag it from the uh, location or from the side of the light source. I went back to the water reflection layer. I went to a blur gallery. First I take the lock and then click on tilt shift. That's to add the blur in, um, let's say depth style. So what I'm going to do is I will leave it unblurred in the mid areas where that uh, middle, mid circle is on and everything that's um, further from that dot, it will be blurred more. So just make sure to put that point in the middle and make sure to blur it from the bottom. Then click on OK. And here I changed the ice flows place. I went back to the castle and I added curves adjustment layer set to color blending mode. And what I tried to do here is I tried to um, add red 
yellow and magenta and I wanted to add the warm tone or the warm color and what I did is I hide the mask and paint it with white only on the walls of the castle everything in the castle except the roofs the blue roofs and the reason why is I wanted to separate the color of the walls from the roofs because I wanted to make the roofs uh, appear uh, bluish and uh, the walls to appear uh, red I clicked two times on that adjustment layer and I moved the slides of the blend if just not to affect the shadows too much and I decrease the opacity and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that adjustment layer and invert the mask after inversing the mask that will allow me just to affect the uh, roofs and what I do next is I add channel mixers for both the roof and the building's mask just to help enhance it a little bit more I went back to the castle mask and I worked more on the rock uh, transition between the castle and the mountain. I also removed the parts where the trees are covered with the castle. I use this stock image of the clouds right here uh, to get that highlights on the clouds and move them to the clouds in my scene by using the black and white technique of cutting. I made a water displacement map. I have a video explaining this technique. I will leave the link in the description uh, to uh, add it to the boat and the water reflection of the mountains. And then I got this image of the boat to use it in my image. And I applied the same steps of fixing the values, uh, decreasing the saturation, getting the natural colors with the, with the uh, channel mixer. Uh, also the color balance and the, uh, the brightness and the contrast to make it dark from the other side that's not facing the uh, light source. So my goal is to make it just bluish and blend it with the uh, foreground of the scene. After fixing and blending the boat with the scene, I made a duplication of it and I flipped it on the, on the uh, vertical line. I use the lasso tool to uh, remove the areas that's not supposed to show in to be shown in the uh, water reflection. 
such as the upper part and fix the uh, other uh, areas with the warp tool as you can see in the scene After that, I added just a bit of uh, motion blur, uh, just a bit, not too much, because I'm going to use the mask tool and the gradient tool to select the bottom areas of the boat, just to affect them without affecting the upper, the upper areas. And then I added more motion blur to the bottom areas. I went back to the mountain reflection image and I applied the water displacement on them. This is the part that will take a lot of time because you will need to apply the water displacement to the boat a lot of times till you get the best results. So the first thing you will do is adjust a bit at the beginning and then you can select the uh, bottom areas of the boat and start adding more. You don't want to add a lot just one time. Start selecting random areas around the boat and change the values in the displacement menu till you get the results that you are satisfied with. Then I use the exposure adjustment layer to make it dark and then I add the model. I added the clarity and the shadows, I uh, increased the shadows in the camera raw filter because that um, model was a little bit dark. And then I applied the same techniques of the channel mixer and the color balance, the levels. I fixed the values, the colors. Uh, just watch my videos that I will mention in the description to see in depth how I use the uh, values and the color blending. I got the I got the stock image of the birds that was black and white. What I did is just I inverted the image to make the birds white and the uh, background black. Then I used that image as a mask to uh, remove them from the from the background and I took them to my scene. And with exposure and brightness and contrast adjustment layer, I made them dark from the right areas. That is far from the uh, light source, but not too dark because they are their natural color is white so they will not be too dark i got this stock image of that mountain covered with snow and i just want to take that snow and i used the technique of the black and white image to separate the dark areas from the bright areas and because this now is uh, white, it's going to be a pair uh, bright in the uh, image. I use that to separate them and take the snow, as you can see with the black background. The snow is white, I select it with the lasso tool. I copy and I go to my scene, I go to the mountain that I want to add the snow to, and I pass, uh, I paste that snow image and place it above my rocks or my mountain or the cliff. Then I added the mask to and with the gradient tool, the black color and the transparent mode, I removed some of the bottom areas and the right areas. My goal now is to 
um, uh, match the color of it with the color of the snow uh, in the background also to make it dark from the uh, right areas that's not facing the light source but of course it's not going to be too dark because the snow is white so i use the brightness and the contrast with the use the legacy and the channel mixers to make it uh, cyanish and bluish or let's just say to add the blue and the cyan Then I add a mask to the layer and I turn it to black and with a random cloud brush in my brushes settings or in my brushes collection I start to paint to add the snow in random shapes Then I got the stock image of the ice flows, I cut it and I put it in my scene on the left side because it felt uh, a bit empty and then I fixed the values, the colors uh, as I did with the other ice flows on the right side. For this part, I chose a random brush in my uh, brush collection. I want it to look like it's a painting brush and then I added a texture to it. It's just a random texture that I found in my patterns. You can uh, download any image and use it as a pattern. I also have a video in the description that explains my brush settings on how and how I uh, make them. And turn the mode to multiply. Uh, look at the preview of the stroke. If you are satisfied, you can start painting with it. And to paint, just uh, add a new empty layer at the top of all of the layers. Sample the color from the area that you are painting above. Like, for example, if you are painting snow, then sample from the snow and start painting beside it. That doesn't require any painting skills. Or a graphic tablet I'm just using the mouse and I'm just painting uh, randomly just clicking and dragging in random way uh, in random areas it is a paint over process uh, your goal is to paint above the areas that uh, need to be fixed and also to add uh, more details as you can see I painted the dark areas on the ice flows as well I painted above the buildings, you can start to paint uh, to add snow above the buildings if you wish. That will give it that concept art feel because you can merge the uh, real images, the stock images with the painting. And by doing it over and over you will uh, find out that you are getting uh, better at this painting uh, process and you will improve your scales. I will also leave a video in the description where I explained the paint over a part more in depth and showed you how to paint small details such as tree leaves, uh, etc. And the rest come with practice. This is the end of this video. I hope you got value from this tutorial. If you did, show us that by clicking on the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Also follow us on our social medias.
And as I mentioned before, if you find some of these techniques hard to understand, I have already explained a lot of these techniques in the past videos. I will leave the links in the description. Also, make sure to get my Digital Landscape Reloaded course to learn more about my workflow and also to support me as an artist. I will see you in the next videos. Peace.